We lost another one. We need this reroute out fast. Come on, someone. I maybe can't tell you apart, but yeah, I take it. And now I'm here. Where do I begin? I just could ask myself why everybody not only sounds like me, but has like the same face. But let's just delve into the one thing you will do in this game for several hours. Okay, so. Realistic gravity, come on! Yeah, no one wants to burn in space, I know, but when do I get a blue round bird with a hat in this game? This exact one. We should have never changed engines. I, I know it's not. It's more realistic for a prophet to cloth pink to have the strength of a chromatose worm with a rotting will to live, but realistic food, war, big monsters, even the good old sad people, all those things be achieved in realism. But that's. I, but that's a step too far. I feel virtually scammed. But but that will not. That will take a while here. So in this plush-induced meantime, what is this game? Judgment or Judge Eyes, as is known in Japan for some specific but probably cool reason, is a spin-off of the Yakuza series, which has quite the enormous mountain of games because it's good. And nowadays, the one revenue stream Sega can't really burn. Huh. Have a little faith, huh? Plus a live action movie. That was a thing, of course. And a straight to DVD prequel of said movie. And a stage play. Yes, a stage play. And now a spin off. Another one. Not the one that had a TV show. Another one. Released in 2018 in Japan and thankfully 2019 in the West. In contrast to all those other things I would happily throw my money at. Sega, please. And just to clarify, I played this game like everyone should on a normal PS4 with the English well, dub and German fuck. subtitles on. Please don't judge me. Besides Chapter 1, some out of context visual spoilers for a handful of side cases and gameplay mechanics, no spoilers ahead. Unless. Being a spin-off, it has a new cast of characters in this familiar setting of the fictional district Kamurocho, which of course is the heart of a fictional Sims Nightlife expansion of fictional Tokyo. But don't worry, you don't have to know anything about the main Yakuza titles to enjoy this game. Even doing so will never relieve the stress of having to remember the basics of fictional crime family ties, tighter than the wool in the hand knitted socks your grandma made in her good days. But now is the, the best chance to give it a try before the reality turns on you. But uh, you will catch us wrecked. <coughs> the story of Judgment focuses on Yagami, a young lawyer who makes experience with the human scenario of overrating your ability to estimate people and underrating your own persuasion skill. Unknowingly pushing a murderer through a trial who immediately gets himself the title of serial killer afterwards. Ben Yagami, now angry at himself, gives up his run of free life ace attorney, but keeps the badge just in case, I guess. With his particular skill set and a newfound cockiness, he ends up starting a detective agency that constantly runs low on money due to him not having majored in economics. You really think I want your money? Oh, what do I know about money? <laughs> In those trying times, casually supporting him is Kaito, a long-term friend and ex-Yakuza from the Tojo family, to which both have a connection, who has an unusual taste for clothing in 2018 and snack in his heart. Dumb. Look here, asshole. Right, not now, Kaito. But not enough to stomach that. In dire need of work, Yagami goes to his old lawyer buddies. On the way, he runs into the one Yakuza guy that hates him. After emotionally handling the smart nuisance with punching and finally washing up in the sad lawyer's art millionaire's estate, a Yakuza-related murder case you have never seen so few eyes stumbles through the door. And you know who the suspect is? Yes, this face swap Yakuza and part-time firebender that will not let you forget that he's there. But that is just the tip of the escalating iceberg with those pesky mask enthusiasts, creepy reporters and random lawful lawyers entering Yagami's life again, as well as blackmail, kidnapping, courtrooms and slowly crawling behind cars. And then chapter 1 ends and you see that the ice goes even further down, circling around characters such as the lawyer fetus, Yagami Kun lady and potential love and stuff kind of. that guy got an aura or what? If I was a chick, I'd be way into that. 
Not now, Kaito-san. Cold like ice, sweet as a cake. So, ice cream cake? The one lawyer but hates your guts for some reason, but now you can just let him wait with a stupid video call. By the way, it actually uses the speakers of the PS4 controller, and I appreciate that with all that's left of my cold, dead heart. The Yakuza that breaks your bonds and melts your heart. The prompt to press X really, really rapidly. The wind chime sound every time Yagami thinks, and he thinks a lot, like really a lot, like like quite a lot, too much. This cops with Ui camera movement. We came a long way from the stills and zero. But a big step back in UFO catcher gameplay. Yagami, you can do all this flimsy detective work, but can't get a round bird out of its captivity. And this is the first game where you can finally stack your prizes in the sad one room fortress of solitude where you regularly sleep on a couch, like a person that has not enough energy and care to become a crazy cat person but has the advantage of never having to feel the pain. Um, <laughs> or you could flee from the cruelty of real life to your inner sanctuary. Or you are aimlessly standing around in this one hostess information hub with nobody to talk to. And so I had to find out there is no hostess minigame. And only one hostess you can talk to while increasingly, increasingly drinking, I guess. In hopes of your sadness soaking out of your skin when you hear there's no karaoke really game either. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? Um, what mini games are there anyway? You may ask. <laughs> you can mash your way through fighting vipers as Rotoro and witness protection, or you can just upgrade to a complete arcade version of Virtua Fighter 5 for your own button bashing pleasures, or go complete retro with Space Harrier, or with Space Harrier, or just play Puyo Puyo and you get the game's price worth in an instant without even doing anything else, because Puyo is love and Puyo is your life now, if it was for. Or pursue the fun game in the creepy analog way by hammering on your old pinball machine brought to you by Unity. Did you know that you can keep up two balls at the same time? Um, my experience with pinball machines were tainted early on. If you want to try showing off your athletic prowess, have fun seeing yourself completely fail at the batting cages. Or less so with darts, but at least it's not bingo golf thing. Haoka, you were so adorable before you corrupted and became an obsessed monster. It will never leave me. Never. And to cool off, you could just play a zombie light gun game without a light gun. Or, I don't know, try your unskilled hand at Shogi if you understand. Nope. But at least I know how losing it next oh, shake works. So. Or to feel even sadder, get a second place at your local drone racing tournament, complete with drone customization for which you find parts scattered around the city because no environmental awareness. Just to someday win, I guess, but look at this intro. Maybe it's me, it's maybe it's because there are no different difficulty modes for this. The handling is rather precise. But every race boils down to you switching between first and second place with the NPCs directly behind you, till your flimsy tech goes down by human contact. Without a storyline like the Pocket Circuit in Zero, there's not much incentive to invest time in that, despite customization options. That I would use if a drone could carry more than half a sugar package. But you can put guns on it! So... How much did time pass? I don't know. But back to the important things. Why do we even need physics in the first place? And then luck hit me. The universe smiled at me. And I only got the yellow one, and then I changed the machine, got the dog, then not the other one, and then the robot they already had, and then I knew my existence was futile all along, and then I stepped back from the machine after getting a cube cat, and what did I get for my effort? 6SB. We both know that these small sums will only add up on my quest for total plush domination. Let them know that their ultimate fate is in my collection. Because I'm the person who's in charge and can stop whenever I want and not those bird plushes. You maybe ask yourself now, what's ASP? Yeah, skill points. Unlike Yakuza 6 and Kiwami 2, just one type for everything. And what can you learn with them? Smoking, chain smoking, the power of friendship and the skill we all need. Not being a weirdo in a group chat. Or invest in the usual stuff like more defense to shed those pesky fists or more combo speed. 
or glorious punches and kicks that scratch the boundaries set by the human potential. Or the even more boundary melting ability not to forget what key does what. I suck at this. And of course, the one and only Sprint Attack! Yes! Yep, we have finally reached the combat system. Fuck yeah! Yagami is quite a different protagonist in comparison to Kyo or Mashima. He does not scream manically or grunt stoically in combat, but falls out of one liner, often, like too often. And his acrobatic fighting style reflects that. You can jump over your enemy's shoulders or from walls, which should be in every game now when it works. It is a bit obvious that this honored, long standing open world with many of its rather open streets was not entirely planned with this game mechanic in mind, often leading to you just soaring past your enemies like a confused eagle. But when you are in a small room, oh boy, it's wall jumping time! Besides that and the normal blocking, enemy grabbing, and sidestepping, he shows off of his own crane and tiger fighting styles. The tiger focuses on a single enemy and has the most satisfying move in all of gaming. The crane on the other hand apparently can shred an entire surrounding onslaught of several Yakuza into pieces. In today's video I'm going to be talking about how I got my school banned from the zoo. Even with those extra acrobatic options and encounters I personally miss the three styles from Zero and Kiwami won the most, not just in this game, but in every game. Especially in the beginning, it felt kinda difficult to connect attacks and sometimes you just forget to switch styles due to them being not that immediately distinct in movement and attack speed like, say, Beast and Rush style. But what about heat action? Oh boy, there are some. Thanks to unlockable skills filling your EX gate faster even quite often. While well, the game results with many objects to more standard heat moves, it has some more unique acrobatic bonds hidden in its sleeves that will make you blink in complete awe. The amount of which gets expanded by the EX boost that lets you do special heat moves besides the short gain in defense. But you can't use as many weapons as in the main titles. There's no equipment menu where you could hot sword. The shortcuts are reserved for your weird taste in consumables. And there are no swords to hold or hard to begin with, even if dropped by enemies. And that makes sense, Yagami is a punching and kicking aficionado, only somewhat connected to the Yakuza. Not an actual member with a degree in mad manery or rhythmic weapon flailing. But with an encounter rate often even higher than the main titles, fighting just loses its luster after a while of walking. So I often ended up fleeing instead of fighting, including this one random time where policemen crashed the fight <laughs> and this happened. You can still pick up most things, they just happen to almost always be the same kind of boxes or the classic bicycles, occasionally the main story throws interesting weapons at you, but just no guns, blades or tasers for you. Instead you have to helplessly watch by getting filled with lead and in bad rain of annoyance have you ever played Final Fantasy XIV 2? No? You lucky summer child. But what does judgment have in common with this game? Blood damage. If you get hit by a glowing boss attack or by one measly bullet, your max health goes down and that bit of your health bar can only be replenished by a first aid kit or your quite expensive steward doctor of choice, which also means more walking, more street fights, more awareness that your combat options don't expand that fast or wide. The amount of SP is quite small for most activities and for some combat moves you have to find QR codes or books, even if some of these are quite inexpensive after unlocking. This makes your progression in combat ability a little slow, especially if you invest first in all those cheap quality of life skills for flying stuff into oblivion and rubbing your face against walls. Of course that is not much of a problem in the main titles due to the gameplay focus on beating stuff up and not being sure it comes with a funny haircut. Not again! But a detective needs more to successfully tackle a case than simple brawling. Of course asking people not the most stupid questions and when robbing your superior detective might Big Mr. Detective their faces by showing them the Damien photo you made of and picking their nose is not a bad idea. And not to forget two different variations of lockpicking, which is not the worst in video gaming, but the most demotivating representation of your morning routine if you fail. Why am I bad? 
And of course, endlessly running after your targets are the Temple Run with Shenmue QTEs flying in your face like flies. And the polar opposite, the dreaded stealth sequence in a non-stealth game, of which I am not a big fan, but I have seen worse. The sequences are a bit long, a bit too frequent, and the most prone to break in this game. One time my game bugged and my target never finished his grocery shopping. Thankfully it is so rare that it does not want to make me stop playing this game. And if you don't have a car to hide behind, you're lucky because Yagami's phone has the ability for magic dress up so you can get immediately caught. But besides that, the game does not care what costume you wear, so nice. When you somehow successfully infiltrated the baddies headquarters, you can witness the incredible. A first person segment that is more than a floating camera that bumps into people. For Yagami as a detective, the first person view opens up a whole new world of investigation. Looking with your eyes. Yeah, totally easy. But 40 minutes later your disorientated body spins in an office room without purpose and you start feeling stupid for rubbing your face against walls while there was a goddamn note on a desk in the middle of the room the entire time I said looking with your eyes goddammit! That's why I recommend making the clue highlighter one of your first skill purchases. It makes your controller wipe right near a relevant point like the emotional support pad life never gave you. It's not on the walls! Stop trying! There's nothing to see here entrance lady, nothing! But just to remind you, it's the happy year of 2018, so use the full extent of your magic technological gadgetry, besides annoying civilians with a drone. I'm still sorry, civilians, and I'm not saying that because fictional police made me. But you ran my way. While Yakuza 6 was already set in a time where smartphones reigned supreme, Judgment takes a cake for technological presence because video evidence, more FaceTime, I don't know, chatting? That's the popular, I guess. Screens everywhere for an authentic modern Japan. And of course, finding a location via your local internet cafe rather than hacking stuff. Which is of course akin to giving you some type of superpower to see everybody's messages, like a knockoff watchdogs, I guess. God damn, they should have invested in those messaging skills and like go to the doctor more, man. To escape that knowledge, say hello to your smartphone interface with apps like the One Local Town app collecting all the data. How do they have my picture? How do they know how many noses I broke? What is the survey? Oh, a coupon, nice. Or a crowdfunding app because who needs rent when you can invest in those funny looking cats? But what about tomorrow's actually today kind of tech? Following several minutes of Yagami's face having uncomfortable contact with this weird tech door in a rhythmic manner. No VR for this hobo. And a few chapters in you can finally enter a mysterious VR building where all the cool kids hang out and make slightly worrying movements without judgement. That's the appeal. This VR game turns out to be an exact digital reenactment of this one weirdly specific dream you had one really eventful evening after your brain combined Mario Party, your childhood dice rolling accident, several recreational substances having a wrestling match, Rockaloid meets status effect, Watching Dramatic Murder, Tron and Matrix at the same time with a mixture of Skittles and energy drinks slowly melting through your mouth, other dreams about getting your teeth punched out by the hundreds, and the experience of playing this exact game burned into your unprotected retinas in this exact order, accompanied by this nihilistic self-aware cube cat. I like it. You get quite a amount of money from it. The music makes me happy. And this cube cat needs a friend. And I wanted... The wrong bird with this god dang head to be it, but moving on, and the universe of it if it wasn't there. Selfies! But what do you need for selfies? Friends! Yes, you can make friends in this game! Finally! Yeah. Hi ho friends! But what does this scary endeavor entail? Friendships always involve extra bonding in the form of several side quests for your sad heart with your local weirdos and business owners. I have to note here that you have no independent stomach gauge, instead it's using your health bar which gets kind of annoying with every restaurant friendship, leading me to the logical extreme, getting myself hurt in virtual combat to finally choke on some fries. What do you do for friendship? 
So let's make a selfie burger, lady. But don't forget to come in, store clerks, that need friendship and a person I can throw retro vinyls at. For this noble cause, I will use my fictional money on an adult purchase, like a sandwich with salad. Uh, Udon was not on my list, but uh, the durations for self-loathing. Uh, isn't the economy on the downslope? Maybe I should think about having money for virtual retirement. Uh, obviously, there are other uses for those elusive so so social skills. After finishing certain side cases, more on that in a minute, you can slowly and steadily plant the seed of a budding romance with certain female characters via text messages of all things. Which of course leads to dates where you mildly disappoint the potential love of your life with the expensive gifts you bought and by losing all your will and dignity before their very eyes. Rounding it off is an awkward talk about, um, sh she's staring at me, uh, what's the least weird thing? Uh, and that did the trick to her heart. Art imitates life. If after that kind of humiliation, you are comfortable enough to regularly talk to human shaped life forms again. The game opens up after a few chapters with side quests. You run into some or get some from a bartender or your detective bulletin board if you have enough friendships. Which naturally leads to you devoting your life for several minutes to finding digital cats, which leads to a better love story than the one time five year old me tried to marry a worm with a scissor. I'm so sorry, worm. And then you accidentally go to the wrong location because those green friendship symbols look on a TV quite similar to the blue ones for side quests and oops, random bomb threat. And then you lay a trap and this guy comes in. Side note to that, the English voice acting does Stop not reach OG Yakuza 1 levels of ham. With exception of... Ugh, son of a bitch. But I think it's a quality dub. The only thing irritating me is that some minor NPCs only have Japanese lines. While the Japanese background chatter gives the city more authenticity, it gets weird if you have two twins with this kind of underwear related problems, don't ask, that speak different languages, or you have two minor but regularly visited NPCs right next to each other greet you with the exact same voice clip. No judgment for the dubbing company. There are three rule balls worth of characters with Yakuza connections in this. Ah, oh, come on! These interruptions by rivaling Yakuza tormenting the city are a constant in the second half of the game, and Racy counteracts even further, with optional opponents sweating at certain corners every single time, regardless if you have beaten them before. For which there is only an item as an incentive instead of an actual storyline. Drone racing, again! It starts every time with this one random dude and this unskippable message and if you wait it out, you just can't let this end without passive aggressively interrupting your gameplay again. If I had to avoid something with most annoying, that would be it. Besides that, there are other things interrupting the game flow. Some friends will support you during battle, which itself is a nice addition, even if I'm not completely sure if that is the first game in the series to have it. Just to let you wait, standing there afterwards, till they said their goodbyes every single time. And if you think that's a bummer, know that everyone you love is at a high risk of getting Alzheimer's. And here are some graphs in the shrinking brain that could just be your shrinking brain someday. Cool, but I learned stuff, main story, but not that right now. <sighs> that's not why I'm playing you for catcher games for. Don't pull this malicious taunt in front of my face, you! At the end of the day, I also have some more nitpicks, mainly due to the new, yeah, it's the third game that uses the engine I know, Dragon Engine. The physics are sometimes the accumulation of all wronginess in this world. I personally dislike the fact that you can accidentally destroy the objects lying around by running into them when you just want to hit people with it, okay? The first time it's funny, but that goes downhill quickly. Yagami himself is rather janky to control outside of combat and is just not the best to go through doors. Did you come to taunt me or help me? I think that the maps in the previous games were easier to read. I just wanted to go back to the only important building and, and stumble into an assault case. 
There are some parts of the main story that the game considers side quests for some reason, which disrupts the pacing a bit. Again, case files with more information for said quests are not that well organized, and you have to dig deep in the inventory to find out how many VR game tickets you have. And about those, Yagami's phone shows how capitalism will haunt you. Yeah, microtransactions. You can buy those tickets or a pack of outfits for your disappointed virtual girlfriends. And I would even buy it because I like throwing my wallet at the real Gagotoko team if it was not 7 euros 99 per pack and 99 cents for those VR tickets but you can occasionally punch some out of street punks so I don't want to open up a discussion about microtransactions and when and where they would be okay here. It's mostly cosmetic tidbits anyway and I'm personally rather lax on the topic but not being able to turn that ad off is a bit much. Why do I keep putting money into it despite me always saying that I hate it? Is it pride? Is it the unwillingness to accept that my personal sentiment about how gravity should work is only mine and would, if put in practice, hurt everybody else? Maybe I just wanted everything to stay the same, rejecting a realistic worldview or progress in the process. Maybe I want everybody in this godforsaken room to know that I'm screaming because I'm suffering. Or is it just this taunting look this stupid bird gives me by just existing? Uh, uh, what? I, I have to turn my mind to something else again, like... Positive nitpicks? Like this host's very protectable face. Or the occasional weird fourth wall breaking camera thing Kaito's brashness produces. Or this very screenshotable facial expression. Or uh, the accurate signage and overall love for detail in the city, including a Don Quixote jingle that should be in everything now. Or those small but sweet callbacks to the main series. And so many cool action scenes where the game is just the best, no argument. 10,000 out of 5 would scream excitedly at my TV screen ever again. Always. And, and if this exact heat move is not an argument for playing this game then what are you doing with your life stop everything you're passively butchering right now while sam are watching this video go out buy this game and hug your nearest ryoga gotoko team employee the occasional interesting usages of old game mechanics and the first person mode during the main story a really cool section with an atmospheric backdrop near the end that I really did not anticipate and it really impressed me. The soundtrack, some of which you heard throughout this video, is overall a delight, yeah, a delight. And the ability to find cats during the investigation sections with which I did not waste a high percentage of my playtime. <laughs> In conclusion, I can say I had my fun, despite some pacing problems, occasional smaller bugs and not as very combat as in the main series, but I hope this will be improved upon in a potential judgement too. That could be the one branch of the franchise that keeps the original fighting gameplay. Yakuza Sam is not even out yet in the west, god damn it people! Besides that, if I have to be honest, I kinda miss the old cast from the mainline titles like Majima, Kiryu, Kaoru, Makoto, Yukui. Goromi! Goromi so much. Every single Platinum hostess and even Mr. Steal Your Pants! But I think we got some good new characters in exchange, but just need some more time to shine in the future. Yagami with his sarcastic semi confidence, Sorry with her slowly melting iciness, and Kaito, the best bro, being standouts here. This guy's fucking loaded. His wallet's burst into the goddamn seams. Don't take his money. We're not thieves. Yeah, yeah, I know. Wait, don't clothes count as stealing? Like I said earlier, we're just borrowing them for a bit. If you say so, you're the lawyer. The story at the end got me personally more emotionally invested than I expected, besides that random health scare in the middle. Even if overall the open world with its lack of story-heavy minigames or karaoke can shake off the spin-off feeling completely, or my Yakuza muscle memory. Overall, this game is a good starting point the real girl Gotoku team can improve on. And maybe we'll see Yagami and his crew again. Maybe. I hope. 
and now I can just sit back and understand but I have to leave the escapist and destroy the escapist and but it follows you, it stranges your soul and your very being until it encapsulates your entire life and you look at it, can't tell how much time you spent, how often you did it and how to deal with everything that is not it. Th th this one specific spl splattering you catcher? What? what? This is the review. Why did this take so long? I, I don't know what got into me, but... but you have to know that this situation with all those people that just sound like me it, it look like me it, it's so new and, and those UFO catches what was up with all those UFO catches anyway didn't you do anything else I know I messed up the structure but I, I, please don't replace me I'm not even getting paid please